Welcome. Welcome to 94.1 FM, Egypt's Australia radio show. Uh, the acronym is EASE. My name is Jerry Gugas. Interviewing Mr. Owen Pike, owner of NT Independent, an online publication, and Chris Walsh, editor of NT Independent. This is a pre-recording via Zoom session on Friday the 4th of February 2022, and it will be on air uh, Sunday the 6th of February 2022. Welcome, gentlemen. G'day, mate. How are you? Yeah, good. Hey, Jerry. Good to be with you. Absolutely. Uh, thanks again. Um, the, let me just start off um, uh, just reminding our listeners again. The Northern Territory Government in September 2020 banned um, NT Independent, which is an online publication, which covers current affairs and, and politics from attending any NT government press conferences. Now, um, I stand tall as an Australian. Australia stands tall with its democratic society values and especially with its uh, freedom of press pillar. NT or any or any community in Australia have an implied freedom of political communication. They have a right to hear information about government, politics, policies, scandals, as you guys point out, about the full range of matters that might affect how they cast a vote. Um, I was listening to your uh, Facebook conference before, and um, it, it staggers some of the percentages that Owen uh, uh, detailed was that uh, a, a large percentage of the working people in the Northern Treasury has a financial commitment to the NT government either being a public servant or being in business or a contractor. I wonder if I can start with you, sir. Um, NT Independent's recent Facebook video, which was uh, uh, featured on Wednesday, the 2nd of February, 2022, quite clearly reveals the current business model isn't financial. Uh, would you consider a co-op form of a business um, uh, structure? Oh, I I, I just want um, press freedom to survive. I, I want um, Chris Walsh to continue to, to, to continue to uh, to publish articles. Um, and I, I didn't start this as a profit making um, venture. If I if I was going to invest in something to make money, I'd do it in my core business. Um, I, I would look at any model to make sure that this continues and. It, whether it survives in its own model or another one being a not-for-profit, uh, community-owned, um, you know, maybe 10, 20, 30 businesses come together and own it. Uh, I, I don't see the independent dying, but in its current form, where, uh, where we fund it, um, provide a lot of benefit to the Northern Territory people uh, because business is too scared to get behind it because of the repercussions. Um, yes, I, I, and, and that was quite clearly made in the um, in a Facebook video. Um, and if I was to add up some of the um, the numbers, out of 110, 120,000 working uh, people in the NT, you've got 24,000 that are directly public servants, plus all the business and contractors that are associated that have won tenders through the government, and I. Um, uh, uh, applaud NT Independent for listing the recent tenders that have been won by the government. Um, that those percentages um, uh, accumulate to a large percentage of the population that is associated with the NT government, and they would feel very much compromised if um, they were to support NT Independent uh, because of this backlash you mentioned a couple of times. Um, you point out um, the, the, I put it to you um, that this is an NT government by Mr. Um, Gun, Michael Gunner, the Chief Minister of NT. Um, if we were to take that uh, in, into another um, side of, of the politics in this CLP uh, that's uh, now um, 
uh, run by Leah. Um, do would we have a different scenario um, from a Labor government in power at the moment, and or a different government? Is it a government thing at the moment? Um, yeah. Well, firstly, just to address the power of the government. Yeah, they employ a lot of people, but not just directly, but through non-government organisations and charities that deliver um, state-based services. And then contracts here in the Northern Territory, the amount of money coming into our government that gets distributed out to contractors, you know, they are in control of a very large majority of, of people and their point of, that, that there's, there's an inability to speak up. Uh, as far as the CLP, um, it's probably an answer for Chris. Um, what I do know is when Labor was in opposition, uh, they did speak to Chris Walsh. Yes. Um, um, they, the Liberal, the CLP do, do answer our questions when we go to them now. Yes. Um, but saying that they would in the next government is something that I don't think I could say, but I'll, I'll give that to Chris to, to probably talk about more. Oh, Chris, maybe I can uh, ask you just uh, on the fly, sir. Yeah, how about that? Uh, yeah, look, actually, you know, I think I was talking to them the other day and they, they made that pledge that if they get in, that they would allow us into the press conferences. Um, and that's the CLP. But look, I, yeah, I think that this comes down to this is this seems to be a, a, a thing The Michael Gunner. I mean, look, other other parties have done it when the CLP was in power back with the Giles CLP, as you remember, Jerry, uh, Dave Tolner, their treasurer once tried to block me from entering a budget lockup because he didn't like what I was reporting. But uh, he didn't make it too far on that one. Uh, and then Labor being in opposition really picked up on that at the time. And then so that's why it's so funny. And then I go to work here uh, with Owen for, for this independent paper and they do the exact same thing and they ban us and they think that that's OK. Um, this, this seems to be a Michael Gunner thing. And I think when you look back at uh, how Labor got elected and we were saying back in 2016, there was, you know, one of the top issues was integrity in government. And this guy, uh, Michael Gunner, promised to restore integrity to government after a disastrous scandal plagued CLP government. Uh, what he did in the end, it, it was anything but that. And in fact, he's, he's really trampled and eroded some of those democratic institutions even further. Uh, you know, we just did a story the other day about them blocking a freedom of information request or application that we have put in. Uh, look, this is a guy who promised in 2016 that he would get rid of fees for it, that the presumption would be on the release of information. It's now been a year trying to get some documents from this government that they continue to, you know, obfuscate and, and push off and, and hide from any type of accountability. Uh, yeah, this is this is uniquely theirs. And look, we, we've got to say that we've got a lot of support on, from a lot of Territorians, first off, but also, um, you know, the Alliance for Journalist Freedom, Peter Gresta's group has come out for us. Uh, uh, we had a group out of New York City who's, uh, for international journalists um, also come out and call on it. We had the Australian Senate, the entire Senate unanimously support calling on Gunner to drop this unconstitutional and illegal ban on, on the free press. But he continues to do what he wants here, and uh, yeah, we 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 try to survive. Uh, sorry, Chris, I, I don't understand. The High Court is in our favour, freedom of press. How is yeah. it that, he, that this this issue is continuing on? I don't understand. Well, yeah, I mean, look, if if there was some sort of challenge that can make, if 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 legally there was something there, I mean, you know, we run risks when you when you get into a lawsuit with the government, you run the risk of of costs and everything there, and you know, we're still having a hard enough time just trying to make ends meet and keep this thing uh, uh, sustainable on some level. That at least it's it's meeting, you know, it's it's cost effective, uh, and like Owen said, even if it's not making profit, as long as it covers its own costs. So get into some sort of high court legal challenge would be kind of, you know, difficult and would put us in a bad position that could probably kill us completely and end us if, if something were to happen in that. So look, we've we've tried to make do with what we have in that relationship there. And like I said, a lot of people support us, but th this is a government that, that was voted in on uh, restoring integrity and have done anything but. And, and just to add to that too, Jerry, they are, um, you know, governments are meant to support startups. And here we have a Northern Territory government 
victimising and doing what they can to kill a local business. Um, it's, it's more than just ignoring us. It's, it's actually trying to kill a local business in a startup in media to provide a benefit for the, uh, for the Northern Territory people. And, and we've got a government trying to kill that business. It's, um, it's something that you'd think would happen in the People's Republic of China um, or the USSR, but it's happening down here in Democratic Northern Territory of Australia. Is it an is it an anti? I've got to ask this off the cuff. Is it an anti issue or is it a Canberra issue? Oh, one hundred percent Northern Territory. Um, the National Labor Party hmm. um, unanimously in the Senate supported the ban being lifted. Um, it, it's it's a one hundred percent Northern Territory issue, and Michael Gunnar claims it's because of my ownership, um, and that's the reason that that he won't allow or won't let us into their press conferences or answer our questions. And um, he's extended that ban, not just into the political side of government, but he's he's extended the apolitical public service. Um, he's, he's made the apolitical public service also not answer our questions. It's um, completely undemocratic. It's, it's entirely Northern Territory. And, and I'd probably say specific to Michael Gunner himself. Mm. Um, I, you know, moving on from that, what we need to do is to find out at the moment we've got uh, the option to continue in the current model, business model that you have, and, and uh, alternatively you've also got the option of uh, going um, and going seeing high court constitution rights and winning at a cost. So these, those two options. Um, could I just say, um, uh, if I can go to uh, Chris, if I may, uh, Chris, how many staff, uh, anti-independent anti could be much more than what it is today. And mm -hmm. uh, you're a man of former ABC, former NT, and you've seen networks at its best um, and, and operated under that sphere. Um, the question would be, um, if growth is considered a, a, as a, an a, through acquisition, how many staff would you employ? Uh, what topic would you readers would like you to only cover? Yeah, look, uh, I think when we started this thing, so right now we've got about two, two of us, and then we've got some freelancers who 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 help out. Uh, and that's been working to some degree. I mean, early on, we were we were lucky enough the way things happened. We had another guy come in, another um, experienced journalist. So we had three. And at three, I mean, we were competing with what the NT News could put out, where they have 12 journalists, right? And ABC here, too, they have 12 to 14 journalists. And, and really, ABC is turning out two, three stories maybe a day online, two, two, two stories. So... Um, yeah, there are efficiencies that can be found. And if you have the right people that you put together, you can really accomplish a lot more with less. Uh, so we were, yeah, we were fortunate. We've been doing that a lot. Now, one of the things that we specialize in, of course, is the, is the covering politics uh, and investigations, uh, doing those kind of things, which I've done both for NT News and ABC. So, you know, that's the thing that, that we find is, is very popular. We've also, you know, reported on a series of, um, and this is what we won some NT Media Awards for back in November was our series of reports into sexual assaults that the NT police weren't publicly reporting. Uh, really troubling stuff, some of that. But, you know, this is what the NT Independence focus kind of was from the beginning is shining a light into those dark places and, and revealing things and reporting on things that the other media weren't doing. And we just found here in the NT that, that was, there was a big opening for that. And, and you could see that with, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of the stuff that we're getting from sources who trust us more than they trust the independent commission against corruption here now uh nobody they've really got some issues and so you know that that kind of works those people come to us they know that we have the courage to get it out and that we're not running an agenda anywhere and we may be small but we're we're powerful in that sense and we do have a pretty big readership people are, have caught on we've worked really hard in the past we're going on two years now so um yeah just just focusing on that just focusing on protecting democracy kind of becoming the center of community debate but also showing people 
what's really going on so that they're informed and when they go to vote and even they know what the issues are and even every day as they make you know uh, uh, decisions on how they're going to provide and support their families and their day-to-day -day lives they should know everything that's going on in their community and that's kind of been our commitment and so far I think we've really delivered on that. Um uh, is there room for uh, another network in uh, NT? Well, what do you what do you mean exactly by that? Uh, by by the term network, meaning radio, television, and online publication, as you're doing. So you're. Ex <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, look. Yeah, that, that's a, that's interesting. Look, there's all kinds of different avenues here. This is the one that works for us right now. I don't think we're looking at going any further. You do have ABC here. Look, there's they're staffing of radio there because I worked in radio for a little while there. It's like crazy. I mean, they've got 20 some people running that. So yeah, you could do things a lot smaller. But um, yeah, right now, I think the way things are, the website for us is is really what works and that gets people and we, we know that people love to read they're sitting on their phone they're reading the stories and let's give them that so so far that's where we're going okay um just to uh, wrap it up because i'm i'm just uh running out of time i do want to thank you owen and chris for being online and allocating the time here with us uh, uh the one thing i do request that uh, that uh, you keep on feeding us because when I was up in the Northern Territory, people would say, you Southerners never cared about us. And, you know, we, we I never got the love from the Northern Territory about being a Southerner. So um, we need to have this association. So keep us in touch. Maybe we can have a program every fortnight from NT and through the radio that we can communicate and tell uh, the people in Melbourne what is really happening up there. We're all worried and concerned about the food not getting through because of current floods and yeah. Yeah, no, I think that'd be great, Jerry. Yeah. And then thanks for your support. I know that we've talked about this before. And so we appreciate that. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Jerry. The last thing I'll, I'll say too is, um, you know, how does a, uh, how does a population or people go to an election and make an informed decision when they don't have all the information to, to vote for a party to do what's best for what they think is best for their society and their economy. And here we've got a government that's stopping that information coming out and getting to the people. And, uh, you know, to be suppressing media at a time when we're in a health crisis and stopping, stopping police from answering our questions and letting the people know that there's predators on the street. Um, yeah. How, how does, how does somebody go to an election and vote the right party in when all of that information is being completely suppressed? No, it's it, it, uh, the reason why we do have NT Independent um, is that uh, you bring it forth and broadcast it. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. No worries. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry. Is he gone? <laughs> All right, I'll give you a call.